my God. Uh, water poured all over me, guys, so you have to apologize to hair and I had to change real quick. Um, you know, this game, when you could tell from the beginning of the game, both coaches made it, you know, a slugfest. Let's go. You're going to back down, and neither team backed down. Um, Antonio was the most impactful player, did great. Kaysen was hurt. Severe's hurt. Damian's hurt. Um, we had a do at point guard. We had CJ at point guard. Um, but, I mean, you think about Chris, how he played. Uh, Lance, when he went in, how he played. Um, but at, at the end of the game, I just said, look, one of you is going to have to make a play. And it may be defense, it may be rebounding. I can't tell you. But they're starting to make plays. Now you got to make a play. And, um, you know, the free throws at the end, uh, you know, that has been our Achilles heel. But this, this, was, a, this was a great road win. Cal, obviously a hard seven-day stretch with those two games. How have you approached this week and, you know, the days leading up to no, this game with your team? No, it was great. Dr. Capilouto was with us. He was on, in the shoot-around with us. He was in the meals with us. And, and I was so happy he wanted to come. And I wanted him absolutely emerged in this so he could see what we're trying to do and how we're trying to do it. You know, these players did that for themselves and the fans that have stood by him. They did it for them. I'm saying I'm happy for Dr. Capilouto, Mitch, Dr. Todd, the guys that brought me here. I'm happy for them. I mean, this has been, you know, it's, it's no easy road, but I'm like, look, I told you, I, I'm, I haven't lost any faith in these guys. I've done this a long time. All you that are shooting arrows and, and bullets, I got bazooka holes in my body. They go right through. They don't even hit skin. So it is what it is. You could be mad, happy, sad. I've got a good team. Now, can I just, I'm not making excuses. Oscar was out four weeks, almost five weeks. You had injuries that Jacob was out games. You had injuries, now Se Severe's out, and we're just trying to patch it together. But here's what happened today. We defended and fought like my teams normally do. We haven't been that to this point. They made a commitment to each other that they would fight this game. And it was between them. I wasn't in, in a couple of the meetings they had. So um, happy for them. Jacob did some good stuff. Missed some plays down the stretch and a free throw and all that. I said, are you OK? Because what's happened to this team is guys are so engaged in their game, if they're not playing well, they can't play for us because they're going to, they're not thinking about us. Today, every guy was locked in and focused on us. Yeah, I don't want to put words in your mouth. But with everything going on, did you feel like the weight of the world has been lifted off this team? Off them. And I was doing everything I can. I was trying to put it all on my shoulders, but I know when you're at Kentucky, you know, it's, it, it's how many times? This isn't for everybody. It's not for every coach. You got to understand, we got fans that are engaged and they, they have, they're, you know, raging fans. And when it's good, they're raging. I remember we won the national title. We had people on the street in a nursing home out in the waving to the bus with walkers. What? I'm looking around like, what is this? So, yes. And then when it goes bad, it's some. But, again, you don't know who's on social media. My guess, too, is a lot of fans from other programs that hoping we die. And they shut that TV off today. They are so mad. Anyone else? Can you talk about the matchup inside with Urosh and Oscar and just how valuable Oscar's minutes are in, in those type of situations? Well, both of them played well. I mean, I didn't look at the numbers right now. I got drenched, so I had to just change and run here, so I haven't looked, but they both played well. But the biggest thing for us, we came in saying low turnovers, because they break out, and you got out-rebound them. If you don't out-rebound them, you're not winning. The games they lost, they got out-rebounded. Rick Barnes is, it is, here we come. The second thing we did, we had to make a choice. Do we let big boy go and score baskets, or do we try to trap and give up 
and we made a choice. And at one point, I almost went back, and the staff went crazy. Don't you dare. They only are going to try to, they can beat us at the three. They can't make enough twos. And so we let them have their way in there, and they did. He missed one late, which was a big one for us. But he made like seven in a row, and I'm sitting there watching it saying, we got to, I can't take this. But we were still up. In SEC play, you guys have fallen behind, but today you guys fell behind again, but came back. What was the difference in kind of overcoming that adversity? I, let, me, let me just say this. Would you please go look at those starts? We had wide open shots and missed them. What did we have today? Wide open shots and missed them. Now, you could say, well, they're not ready. Or, I don't know. They're not machines and they're not robots. But if you're running good stuff and a guy's wide open and misses, and then misses again, and they get a break at layup in the three, you're going to be down 8 nothing, And that's why I walked in the first time out and said, we're fine. we got great looks. Just start knocking them down. Um, I, just, I just want to be here for this group, um, help them write their own story, not the other stories, try to keep them feeding the positive. Forget about the negative. I'm, I got a couple guys I know are looking at the internet and I want to strangle them. Why? They're not even, yes, yeah, some of them are fans of ours, but they're not fans of basketball or they're not fans of ours. Why would you read somebody saying something about you? Stop it. You know what we did last night? I not only collected the phones, I collected the iPads and everything else. And all I told them is, we're getting after this tomorrow. You go and have a great night's sleep, and you're not looking at anything. Now, when they got up for breakfast, because they didn't get to see their phone for 12 hours. Phone, phone. Well, we collected them all. And I guess we're going to do that and make Dr. Capilouto travel with us, too. That's the two things that are going to start happening. All right, last question so I can get out of here, please. Cal, you said a, a few times this year that, that this team is not like my other teams or not like my normal teams. What, what specifically do you, do you mean by that? And it, it sounds like you think that flip might have been switched today. And was that no, clear? No, we're, we're different. It, it doesn't mean we're not good. I said, this is a different team. I've had coaches call me that are Hall of Fame, my friends, and say, you may have to play more traditional. You know, all these guys doing this and taking 33s, you may have to play more traditional because of who you are and what your team is. That's my job, to figure out what's the best way for this team to play. I have a different team every year I coach. Even if you got one or two guys back, you got four or five new ones. Every year I coach is a new team. I got to figure it out. It takes me time. When you have injuries and all that kind of stuff, it adds to it. And I told all you guys, it's going to take time. This is not going to happen overnight. And everybody panicked and, you know, I had a foot on the panic button. I didn't have two feet on it, though. But I would, I, look, I'm so happy to be coaching that group of guys. Now I'm going to do everything I can to help them break through and be what they can be. That's my job. And I don't listen. Believe me, I don't read. I don't listen. I watch Alaska shows. You know the one I'm on right now, the Waltons. Anybody watch the Waltons? That's the greatest show. It's 50 years old, but I watch the Waltons. I mean, I don't pay attention. And you know who I've apologized to for the last week? My wife. I said, honey, I am so sorry you're going through this. She said, I'm worried about you. I'm fine. I, I don't want you. You know, you got family and stuff. My kids are calling me, you okay, Dad? Yeah, I'm okay. You okay? So this is a war... We won one. We got another tough one on Tuesday. And they're playing great. But this was one that, you know, you can, you can get in a building like this and against a coach, a Hall of Fame coach like Rick Barnes, and steal one like this. And I say steal one, you know, we, we played. We got down early. It didn't look pretty. But you know what? I haven't lost any faith in these guys. I got good guys. And I've got some talented guys, just different than some of my other teams. We can't get our own like I've had teams be able to just throw it to a guy and go get a basket. We're not that team, so we got to play a little more traditional. How about CJ today? The impact he had on the game and the, and the mind and the talk and, you know, happy for him, Antonio, Adu, Chris Livingston, Jacob, Lance, Oscar, Ugana got in for a minute. Um, but we'll see. Going forward, it's next game. 
you know, and, and all it is, my whole mindset has been win the next game. I'm not worried about what happened. And I did ask the guys, would you have rather have beaten South Carolina and lost here or didn't do what happened? Oh, we're good. We're good. I said, great. Move by that game. Move by it. We had two starters out. Move by it. Let's go. Thanks, folks.